We're continuing with topic F here. We've been looking at the applications of derivatives, and we saw that the derivative can be considered as the slope of the tangent line. We can think of the derivative as velocity of a position function, and we're now going to look at the derivative in general as a rate of change. The derivative always gives us an instantaneous rate of change. Oops, uh, instantaneous there. Algebra can give us an average rate of change, but only calculus, derivatives, can give us an instantaneous rate of change. So let's look at a couple of examples. I'm going to start with this equation, which I'm sure you've all seen before. It allows us to convert a Celsius temperature into a Fahrenheit temperature. The derivative, f prime of c in this case, would just be the constant, 1.8, the slope of that line. And in terms of what it means, this is saying that the rate at which the Fahrenheit temperature changes is 1.8 degrees per degree change in Celsius. So I'm going to write this as a rate of change statement. So I'll bring in a little bit. The rate of change in degrees Fahrenheit is 1.8 degrees per degree Celsius. As we interpret our derivatives, we'll use that same kind of rate of change language. In number two, we've got a table that shows the number of VHS tapes, if you still know what those are, sold in various years. I'd like to find a reasonable model, V of t, where V represents the number of tapes sold in the year that is t years after 1995. So let me make a little list of t values here. If 1995 is my zero year, this would be three years later, four, five, six, seven, and eight. All right, the number of tapes sold is given here. And I'm gonna go ahead and just graph that. I think I'll just go ahead and use Desmos. And then that way we can take a look at the shape and see what kind of a model would best represent this. So here we go, I'm gonna put in my table. And let's see, three, four, five, six, and seven. And eight. And let me put in the y values here. Oops, that was 86.2. Holy cow, let me try that again. 86.2. Uh, 99.4. 86.2 again. 73.6. And 53.2. All right. In terms of my window size, it looks like the x value 0 to 10 would cover that. And on the y's, well, they get pretty big. Let's go 0 to 100. All right, and I can see here that this is definitely not linear this time. In fact, probably a quadratic model is going to come about as close as I can come to that. It's roughly an upside down parabola. So I'm going to go ahead and do my regression and find my model. Uh, y1, does most notation for regression is that little tilde, and I want quadratic, so ax1 squared plus bx1 plus c. Oops, plus c. And there we go. It's not a perfect fit, but it's not terrible either. You can see here they give me the correlation coefficients. The r squared is about 0.93, so not bad. So I'm going to go ahead and use this as my model. Uh, they give me the a and the b and the c, so I'm just going to jot down my equation. v of t 
would be right here, negative 6.27 t squared plus the b is 66.99 t um, then the c is a minus 84.49 so just writing that out and again I did use v since they wanted me to write this as v of t that's how I did it with t as my independent variable and there I've got my equation that fits the uh, data reasonably well. All right, we're supposed to find and interpret v prime of 3 and v prime of 6. So let's start with just getting v prime of t. 2 times negative 6.27, negative 12.54 t, plus 66.99 and then minus zero for the derivative of the constant term. So, oops, the first one's three, b prime of three. If I just plug three in there, I get 29.37. And let's see, that's a positive derivative. Uh, three would be 1998. So it says in 1998, the number of tapes sold is increasing at this rate by 29.37 million per year. So back in 1998, VHS tapes look like a pretty good investment. All right, let's look at V prime of 6. If I plug 6 in here, I get negative 8.25. So most BDVDs had been invented by then. Um, let's see here. Again, 1995 was the starting year, so this would be six years later. In 2001, the number of tapes sold is now decreasing at the rate of 8.25 million per year. So our derivative always tells us something about an instantaneous rate of change. In this case, how fast the tapes, which are the sales of tapes were changing right at the moment in 1998 and in 2001. All right, take a look at this next one. The world's worst nuclear accident occurred in Chernobyl in 1986. Most deaths attributed to the accident are due to the release of 27 kilograms of radioactive cesium-137, which has a half-life of 30 years. Find a reasonable model, C of t, for the amount of cesium-137 remaining after t years, and then describe the rate of decay one year after the accident, and again 30 years after the accident. When I'm being asked for the rate of decay, that's a rate of change. So right there, I'm being asked for the derivative. The rate of change is the derivative. So, two parts to this. First of all, we need to actually find the model, just like we did in the last problem. And then we need to find the derivative to figure out the rate of decay. I wasn't given a table or a chart this time, so I'm going to make one. And let's see, I'm going to say 1986, the year of the accident, would be t equals zero. So I'm measuring time since that accident. 
And it said that right at that time, there were 27 kilograms of this radioactive substance released. The half-life is 30 years. So 30 years later, we've cut this in half. It's now 13.5. And that's actually enough information, but we could go on if we wanted to, right? Every 30 years, we have half as much. So after 60 years, we'd have, uh, what is that, 6.75? Let's just do one more. Another 30 years, we cut it in half again. 3.375, and so on. Anytime you have radioactive decay, it's always an exponential function. In this particular case, we certainly could look at this. Actually, let's go ahead and look at it on Desmos. We could look at it just to verify that it's really exponential, but I suspect most of you probably have seen that before. If I put in a new table, um, my x values or t values were 0, 30, 60, and 90. And we went with 27, 13 and a half. I always get in trouble with that decimal. <laughs> 6.75. And finally, 3.375. All right, let's go ahead and fix our window. X values, I'm going to go 0 to 100 this time. And Y values, 0 to 30 would cover that. And you can start to see, it's actually a little more subtle than I had hoped. Maybe I should have looked at it a bit more. Um, you can start to see that exponential curve, that exponential decay curve coming down here. Okay. So if I want to do an exponential function, I will ask Maple, or not Maple, uh, Desmos, Y1. And I want an exponential function, so I'm going to ask for the form A times b to the x power. Oh, x1, sorry, I was going to say, why isn't it doing it? There it goes. All right, and we've got a beautiful graph. Of course, the r squared here is exactly 1, because we made this perfect, right? We literally cut our values in half every 30 years. So a is 27, our starting amount and b is about 0.977. So my exponential function will be y1 equal y equals, or in this case, what is it actually? c, I guess, c equals 27 times, we'll call it 0.977 to the t power. All right, I need the derivative of this. I've got the constant multiplier of 27, and just as a reminder, um, the, we, we didn't talk a lot about the derivative of the exponential function when we didn't have e to a power, but it is in your list. The derivative of something else, a to a power, is itself a to the power times the natural log of whatever that base was. So in this case, we're going to get 0.977 to the t back again, but then we'll have to put in a natural log of 0.977. And I'm just going to go ahead and do the 27 times the natural log. That gives me about negative 0.628. times 0.977 to the t. So there's my derivative. And I now want the rate of decay or derivative specifically one year, 
and 30 years after the accident. So C prime at 1, negative 0.628 times 0.977 to the first power. is about negative 0.61. So one year after the accident, or in 1987, the amount of cesium in, is decreasing at the rate of 0.61, and I guess that would be kilograms per year. should have said after one year here. Uh, 30 years after the accident, C prime of 30. I have negative 0.31. So after 30 years, the amount of cesium is still decreasing, but only about half as fast, right? So after 30 years, the cesium-137 is decreasing by 0.31 kilograms per year. All right. We have one more question. Here we have a population of animals in a particular habitat grows according to this logistic equation. P represents the population in thousands, and T is the number of years after the year 2000. So, we'd like to find both the population and the growth rate in 2010 and again in 2015. And then in Part C we'll talk about some limits. So, since I want growth rates, that immediately tells me I need the derivatives. Right? As soon as I see growth rates or rates of change, that's the derivative. So I'm going to start by saying, all right, let's go ahead and do that derivative, p prime of t. And it is a quotient. So let's see, I'm going to use f is 10 e to the t. And g is 2 e to the t plus 4. f prime would be still 10 e to the t, and g prime would be 2 e to the t. Right? Derivatives of e to the t are so nice and easy. All right, quotient rule, g f prime minus f g prime over g squared is going to give me g f prime 10 e to the t times 2 e to the t plus 4 minus f g prime 10 e to the t times 2 e to the t. Over g squared, 2 e to the t plus 4 squared. Let's simplify that a little bit. I'll distribute, so I'd have 20 e to the 2t plus 40 e to the t minus 20 e to the 2t. So that was kind of nice. Those will cancel out. And I just end up with 40 e to the t over 2 e to the t plus 4 squared. So there's my p prime. So two things here that I'll end up, oops, that I'll end up plugging into. The original p will give me population, and then my p prime will give me rate of change. I'm going to put both of those in my calculator so I can plug into them relatively quickly and easily. 
I'll put y1, I'll put in the p function, 10 e to the x I'll have to use for the calculator, and 2 e to the x plus 4. I'm going to put the derivative in my y2. So for that one, I have 40 e to the x. It's my numerator. And then 2 e to the x plus 4 squared as my denominator. If I now go to the table, notice that for whatever x value I plug in, I'll be able to see both the y1, which was the p, the population, and the y2, which is my p prime or rate of change. And we wanted to start in part a for talking about what's going on in 2010. All right, t was the number of years after 2010, so this is t equals zero. And at that point, the population P is 1.67, and the P prime is 1.11. I'll come back to that in just a moment, but let's talk about that first. The population of these animals is 1.67 uh, thousands, I guess they told us. And it's growing or increasing by 1.11 thousand animals per year. Oops, that was P prime, sorry. For part B, we want to do the same thing for 2015. That would be five years later, so T equals five. So I'm going to go back to the calculator again, since I already have those plugged in. Plug in a t equal 5. And it looks like population has now grown to 4.93. And p prime is 0 0.06, or it's 0 0.07 if I round to two decimal places. So the population has gotten quite a bit bigger, but it's growing much more slowly than it was before. So the population in 2015 is 4.93 thousand. And it's still growing, positive derivative, but it's growing by only 0 0.07 thousand animals per year. I did keep the units of thousands here. If you wanted to, you could move your decimal three places and just say that's 70. That would be fine. I'm just using the units that were given for simplicity, I guess. All right, the last thing we were asked to find is a couple of limits. First of all, we wanted the limit as t goes to infinity of p of t. And p of t is 10 e to the t over 2 e to the t plus 4. Right now, if I were to plug in infinity, so to speak, that would become infinitely large, and so would that. So I would have the indeterminate form, infinity over infinity. In order to kind of fix that, I'm going to use that technique that we used quite a bit. I'm going to divide the top and bottom in this case, by e to the t. So I'll end up with 10 on the top and 2 plus 4 over e to the t on the bottom, which is going to give me 
10 over 2 plus 0, or 5. So what's the same? After a long time, the population of these animals is going to level out at 5,000. We often call this the carrying capacity. It's essentially the largest population that the habitat can support. All right, let's talk about the limit of the derivative next. If I want to take the limit as t goes to infinity of p prime of t, p prime was 40 e to the t over 2 e to the t plus 4 squared. And once again, I'll notice that if t goes to infinity, that's infinity, that's infinity, this is the indeterminate form, infinity over infinity. I'd like to use the same trick, but before I do, I'm going to need to uh, multiply out that denominator so that I can work with it. Squaring this is going to give me 4 e to the 2t plus 8 e to the t for both the inners and outers, so 16 e to the t plus 16. I'll now use my usual limit trick here as t goes to infinity. I want to divide by the highest power in the denominator, so in this case e to the 2t. So on the top, I'll still have one of those e to the t's even after one cancels out. It'll be in the denominator. Down here I would get 4. Same idea here, 16 over 1 e to the t. And then a 16 over e to the 2t. All of these fractions have something going to infinity in the bottom, so 0 in the limit. And my limit turns out to be 0 over 4, or 0. All right, what's that telling me? Well, this is again after a long time, t is going to infinity. The derivative, or the rate of change in this population, is 0. It's no longer increasing, it's not decreasing, it's just staying the same. That makes sense when you think about the fact that we've kind of reached a stable value of 5,000. We'd have no more change in that population. So after a long time, the population's rate of change is zero, or you could just say it's no longer changing. All right, that brings us to the end of section F.